Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today on the bench is another amplifier board. It is the second of four that I need to review. They were all sent in from various viewers or channel supporters. I really appreciate that. Before I begin, I want to give my Patreon supporters a big thumbs up. I had some more people join. Especially now that Google AdSense is not paying as much as it was. I don't know if it's my channel. I really need to look at my statistics and see if you know I'm losing viewers or you know something like that. But over the spring, it, the AdSense revenue has dropped to about one third of what it was, so it, it's decreased significantly. You know, I'm not rich. I don't make a lot of money in my main job, and the YouTube supplemental income is kind of nice to have, really. So having the Patreon support is really important now because. You know, AdSense is just not doing it anymore. What I decided to do is any video under 20 minutes, I'm not going to have commercials interrupting the videos. Though There will be a commercial at the beginning and end. But what led me to do this is, well, the AdSense is down, so it doesn't make sense. I was thinking about demonetizing the channel and hopefully just going on Patreon support. However, if I demonetize... I have to remember that YouTube wants to make money from commercials as well. And when you're not monetized, your videos may not be suggested. So yeah, I don't think it's a good idea to demonetize the channel, but I want to cut back on the commercials. The other thing is, let's say you're watching a video that's 10, 15 minutes long, and they pop these darn commercials in every three or four minutes. It's just too much it's very annoying any video that's under 20 minutes I'm not gonna have commercial interruptions and I do hope that you would let those play so I can benefit from that okay I think I rambled on enough about that let's get into our video here our TDA 7377 Pro board and it is a class AB type and what do you see here that's pretty interesting I see a very decent sized heatsink one thing they seem to not get right a lot with these boards is they put on a too small sized heatsink even on the class D boards now you think that class D being efficient wouldn't need much of a heat sink. Well, they still have to dissipate heat. Now, this is a linear amplifier. It's a class AB, and it needs to dissipate more heat. And I see it where they put these tiny little heat sinks on. It's just not going to cut it. But this one has nice-sized heat sink with, you know, fairly large fins. And it should help keep this thing cool. Maybe not at the highest operating voltages with the low impedance loads, but we'll check everything out here. But anyhow, we have a volume control. Power in here. We have the uh, output channel here. Another output channel over here and the uh, three millimeter mini jack input here two large power supply filter caps this appears to be a reverse protection diode of course the chip itself and the heat sink it does seem to be of decent quality they are using film caps as the input decoupling and uh, what else here can I say? I'm not sure about these generic caps though. But at least they do offer uh, plenty of filtering on the input. Even though you are going to power it with a battery or already uh, probably a filtered DC supply. And my other amplifier tests... I found that having a decent amount of filtering on the input does help with your power output. It gives you a little bit extra. Okay, well, I'll do the normal battery of tests on this thing. Power measurements, distortion, frequency response. 
if you watch my videos, you know pretty much what goes on there. It did come with this little uh, instruction manual. It is in English over here, on this side of it. Claims to be 30 watts per channel, but no, it's not going to be that. It might get close. We'll, we'll try it out, though. Um, 8 or 4 ohm loads. They just give some uh, wiring instructions. I looked around to see what these things cost, and I found them on eBay in the 10 to $15 range. They also have a version where the heat sink is horizontal, and I've seen some with a smaller heat sink for a lower price, but uh, what's the point if the chip's going to run hot? I would recommend getting the one with the proper sized heat sink and of course mount it this way so air can flow through the fins. I always see people building amplifiers that will have the heat sink horizontal like this or you know like this and you really want it vertical so the air can flow through the fins and give convection cooling to the uh, amplifier board. Okay, I have everything connected, speakers, music source, and power. Power supply set for 12 volts on channel 2 here. And I noticed there's a little LED on there, so what color will it be? It's usually some bright blue or red color. Power it up and see. Green! We have a green LED this time. Haven't seen that used on any boards I've tested yet, but first time for everything. Okay, let's do the music sample here. YouTube safe music. Sounds fine to me. How about hiss? Very quiet. I don't hear any hiss from the tweeters. So it's a nice quiet amplifier. Okay, I did do a little test off camera. Because I don't want to blast the microphones. It'll just sound distorted. But one problem I often see with these amplifiers is they don't have enough gain for these music players. In other words, even with the volume wide open, volume wide open on the music player, you're not getting the full potential of the amplifier. It you know, doesn't have enough gain to reach clipping. But good news with this one is I can turn the music player up and the volume control all the way up, and it does get pretty loud. It just hits clipping. So while it could use a little bit more gain, it is good enough that I think it would work okay with music players without requiring any preamp. I mean, that's probably where you would use the uh, amplifier the most with, uh, you know, devices that have a headphone out type jack like a phone or a music player. Okay, so let's get some power measurements. I have the non-inductive 4 ohm loads connected to each channel. Get you pointed at the scope here. And uh, I'm hearing squeaks from a snicker. Hey, Tick. There we go. Look at that. I can drive it into clipping without needing my preamplifier. Look at this. It drops lower. The clipping point drops lower. Now, the problem is. I'm exceeding the limits of my power supply. See, it goes in the current limit, voltage drops. So what I'm going to have to do is set this up for parallel channel here so I can properly perform the test that the different supply voltages stand by. Okay, I got the power supply paralleled. 
So I'm using one channel in parallel mode so I can get double the current. But to uh, figure the current, you have to add these two together. So it's 1.4 amps right now. And get back here on the stand. And yeah, it clips perfectly now. No sagging. No sagging voltage issue anymore. Okay, let's see what we get. Looks like about 6.8 volts. 6.8 squared divided by 4 ohms. 11.56 watts. That's exactly what I would figure. And let's see. Oh yeah, that heat sink is getting really hot. Doing such a test with 4 ohm loads is really going to stress that out. Let me turn that off. Okay, so what I'll do now is get a, another power measurement with a 14 volt supply. And after that, I'll get a bunch more off camera. And at the end of the video, I'll display the results. Okay, there's clipping. Take it out of clipping. 8.05, we'll just say 8 volts. 8 volts RMS squared is 64 divided by 4 is 16 watts of clean undistorted power very good okay let's take a look at distortion this is the one kilohertz fundamental the one percent 4.5 kilohertz pilot signal and I put that in there just so I can compare that with the distortion nodes so we crank that up that's clipping we'll pull it out of clipping and wow right when you just pull it out of clipping it's really clean here I don't see any nodes maybe a little blip there and it just could be the scope as well the scope does have its own distortion it could be putting in the signal as I, I adjust that you can see a third coming and going as I turn it uh, or adjust the, the input signal level but again, a small node like that could be from the oscilloscope. But this is looking very clean. Okay, 20 hertz. And let me turn off the uh, waveform there so we can see it. Uh, updating will be a lot slower because of the low frequency. Again, a very clean signal. Okay, now we're at 10 kilohertz. Pull, pull it out of clipping there. It's still pretty clean. There is a couple little nodes there. But keep in mind, this is at 4 ohms, which is going to be harder on the amplifier. And of course, solid state amplifiers are going to have more distortion at higher frequencies. But this is still a pretty good amplifier. Okay, let's take a look at frequency response. I have it connected to the field tech function generator. And normally the signal should be at this graticule and the bottom at this graticule. But we're not quite there. In fact, we're about 3 dB down at 20 hertz. And that's probably due to the input capacitors in fact it would have to be due to those so let me turn up the frequency here so around 60 70 Hertz we're at the point we should be on the scope so what I'll do now is just increase the frequency and see how flat the response is That's 20 kilohertz. So aside from the roll off at lower frequencies, it is flat all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And just for the heck of it, we'll go on higher. That's 50 kilohertz. It's still flat. That's good enough. 
Okay, so let's take a look at our results. First of all is the power measurements using 4 ohm loads, both channels driven, max clean power before clipping. At 8 volts, which is the minimum operating voltage of this amplifier, it was putting out 4.6 watts. At 10, 7.8, 12, 11.6, 14, put 16 watts out. 16, it put 20.3. 18 volts, it put 25 watts. What about 8 ohm loads? I didn't measure 8 ohm loads, but on my regulated supply here, you're going to get the typical measurements. If you multiply these by 0.6, it's not quite 0.5 because there is additional losses in the amplifier when you run it at lower impedance loads. So, for example, with a 14 volt supply, we're getting 16 watts with a forum load. So if I multiply that by 0.6, I would expect to see about 9.6 watts with an 8 ohm load. Idle current was 70 milliamps. It does use a Schottky type protection diode. What they do is they put this in series with the positive supply line. So if you hook up the power supply backwards, it won't blow the amplifier up. If they use just a regular silicon diode, there's about 0.65 or 0.7 volt drop across that. And that will incur a little bit more power output loss than direct connected. But when you use a Schottky diode, it has a lower uh, voltage drop across it, about 0.3 volts. So those losses aren't as bad. So that's a nice touch doing that. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's kind of nice to see that they did that. Most of the other amplifiers I check that do have the protection diode use a silicon, and you incur more losses that way. Plus, when this amplifier is really cranked up, having uh, four amps go through the diode does heat it up quite a bit. Heat sink temperature. Although they did use a decent size heat sink, it did get pretty hot. One quick go, no go test is just to put your hands on it, just put your fingers on it and hold it. If you can't hold your finger on it for more than a few seconds, then it's too hot. And it definitely got too hot to hold my, hand, my uh, fingers on it. Surprisingly, the heat sink is marginal. Now keep in mind I was using continuous test signals. With music, you're not going to have a continuous heavy draw on the amplifier like I did here. At higher voltages from 14 to 18, I would say that the heat sink is simply inadequate. You'd have to uh, put a little fan or something on there to help cool it off. And that's the benefit of the Class D. They certainly don't need such a large heat sink to keep them cool. Lastly, I like the terminals. As you screw it down, it has the little gate on the bottom that pulls up and grips onto the wire. They seem to be a better quality than some that I have seen on these little amp boards. Another nice touch. Oh yeah, I should mention distortion. I didn't see any real problems with distortion either. Nothing that really stood out. Much less than 1%. So, you know, it may not be hi-fi quality, but... I really can't believe you could hear distortions at such a low level, especially at the higher frequencies. So what do I think about this little amplifier? Well, for what it is, I think it's pretty decent. I would certainly recommend this one. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. The wildlife. the wildlife. Here are the peeps. About ready to fledge here in two or three days. There were three of them, but not long after they hatched, one disappeared. I looked all over on the ground and couldn't find it, so I don't know what happened. But the other two seem to be healthy. There's mom pitching a fit because I'm around the babies. So I think I better scram before mom gets pissed.
Oh, Rock and Robin's gonna really gonna rock tonight. Okay, so what I'll do now is get a. Blah, 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 blah.